To those of you following the crypto markets, especially the altcoin markets, you may be familiar with HEX, one of the fastest rising cryptocurrencies out there, along with uh, Richard Hart, who is a very enigmatic figure online, founder of HEX. Richard joins us today to talk about this coin and his upcoming projects. Welcome to the show, Richard. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. You've got a big following online. You've got uh, a lot of people who support you, a lot of deniers of the project. We're going to be addressing both of these. You've been called many different things from, depending on who you talk to, you've been called genius, uh, innovator, one of the best entrepreneurs of our time. You've been called a con artist by those people who doubt you. So we're going to address all these. Now, I'm not saying you are or aren't. I'm just passing along what I see online. You have raised and disputed. You have, you know, you have been doing a lot of philanthropic work. So we'll be talking about the $27 million you recently raised for charity. But first, let's talk about HEX. Like I mentioned, it is sure. one of the fastest growing coins. It has brought a lot of attention from its uh, users, but also a lot of controversy. So let's talk about what it is first and foremost, when you began the project and why you started the project. Sure. So uh, I'm Richard Hart. I'm a retired serial entrepreneur. I've uh, had 10 different businesses. Got up to 150 employees, did 60 million a year turnover back in 2003, retired, traveled the world, bought Bitcoin, bought the top at 30, wrote it down to two, and used to mine full uh, Bitcoin block rewards, 50 BTC block rewards on my own with no pool, which now, you know, 50 Bitcoin is a lot of money. Back then yeah. it was $25. Now it's a lot. Because the price went up 6.5 million X. So in cryptocurrency, it's one of the only places in the world where you can make millions of percent returns. It's absolutely amazing. So Bitcoin, as amazing as it is, it has flaws. It has had errors, it has bugs, it's bad for the environment. It doesn't make technical progress very quickly. The best thing it has going for it is that there's a lot of liquidity. So if you're a billionaire and you need to buy a billion dollars worth, the price moves against you the least. But from every other aspect except that one, there's superior technologies out there. So, you know, I've had a ton of Bitcoin for a very long time, and I thought, why don't we just fix some of the problems with it? And many people have tried to do that before, and they just get kicked out of the Bitcoin community because they're not very progressive in mindset. And so if you really want to make the world a better place and you demand more than the status quo, you've got to build it on your own. So Bitcoin set out to be peer-to-peer -peer digital cash. That's the title of the white paper. It is not peer-to-peer -peer digital cash. No one uses it in that way. Less retailers accept it now than three years ago. There's less transactions on chain now than there was three years ago. The, the throughput is roughly the same as it was three years ago. That's not how technology is supposed to work. So if you want anonymity, or you want smart contracts, or you want stable coins, or you want time deposits, which HEX is, you can't do any of that on Bitcoin. It's a, an old ossified technology that is likely to be surpassed by other things. For instance, Ethereum is only a 3x away from passing it in market cap. Hex is only a 3x away from passing Ethereum in market cap, depending on what ranking set you use. And so, you know, there was a time when MySpace was the top dog. Now no one uses MySpace. Mm -hmm. and, and people would have already replaced Facebook, but they keep buying everyone that could. So they bought uh, WhatsApp. They bought Instagram. They're just buying up anyone that could s supplant them. So what does Hex do? Hex is basically Bitcoin, but instead of proof of work, which rewards miners with Bitcoin to destroy the environment. Now, luckily, about two thirds of the mining that's done is using renewable energy, but one third isn't. And that one third is a lot. So what if you just replace the proof of work where you pay miners to dump the price to then take that money to go destroy the environment with it. What if you removed all those negative externalities and instead paid inflation to people that held the price up? Proof of weight. This is what banks do. Banks use proof of weight when they give you a time deposit or a certificate of deposit is what they call it in the United States. Yeah. The longer you lock up your money, the more interest you make. The time value of money is very well understood in the legacy markets and absolutely no cryptocurrency was designed to address it except mine. Okay, so Richard, you're saying that HEX is the crypto equivalent of a certificate of deposit. So let's address how that works then. The interest rate aspect, sure. how does HEX pay out an in interest to the users? The thing which HEX most resembles is Bitcoin. Bitcoin miners 
earn interest. They buy mining hardware and electricity. They mint their own rewards out of thin air. I used to mine Bitcoin out of thin air. Double clicked an EXE on my computer, Bitcoin would appear. So the amount that you're rewarded is based on how many other people are competing against you for that reward. And the person who rewards you is yourself. Just like if you draw yourself a beautiful painting, now you've got a beautiful painting. You clean your room, now you've got a clean room. If you mine Bitcoin, now you've got Bitcoin. You can sell them, you can hold on to them. And the same goes for hex. If you lock up your hex for a while, you can end your stake and mint yourself a reward of extra hex. And so if a lot of people are staking, the reward goes down in hex terms. If few people are staking, the reward goes up in hex terms. Now, what's the most important part? The most important part is how much those hex are worth. If you had bought hex on January 5th of last year and held it until a couple of weeks ago, you'd be up 386,000% yeah. before interest. With interest, you would have made an extra in between 30 to 100% on top of that. It's amazing. And you would think this is impossible. You'd think this, this has to be a scam. Nothing can have returns as good. And then you look at Bitcoin and it's up 6.5 million X in 11 years. You look at Ethereum and it's up 14,000 X in five years. So being up 4,000 X native in a year and a half is actually very similar to what Bitcoin and Ethereum did from their launch days. So it's, it's standard for the course, really. But, but can, you, can you just describe the mechanism here behind, uh, behind the, 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 I guess, the staking and the uh, interest rate payments? Because if I, let's say if I buy Bitcoin or Ether and I deposit that with a company like, let's say, Grayscale or Celsius Network or mm -hmm. any of these companies offering um, uh, loans and deposits with cryptos, mm -hmm. the, 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 the financial institution itself is paying me an interest rate. Similarly, if I buy yep. a CD, and deposit that with the sure. bank. The bank itself is paying me an interest rate, but how does a cryptocurrency yep. itself do that? I mean, if I put hex in my wallet, just yep. any any wallet that doesn't the wallet doesn't pay me an interest rate, interest rate, but you're saying that the cryptocurrency generates income through through uh, yes. through its own mechanisms. How does that work? So every every Bitcoin that exists in the entire world exists because it was minted out of thin air by miners, and so every single Ethereum that exists in the world exists for the most part, because it was minted out of thin air by miners. All of the hex inflation and all of the rewards that come, come out of thin air from miners, just like the interest at your bank. When you deposit your money at your bank, they don't lend it out. They use it as a reserve to get a multiple larger free money from the government or interest rates so low they might as well be free. So they never lend your money out. They lend the inflation out from the government. So your yield in normal banks is from inflation. Your yield as a Bitcoin miner is from inflation. Your yield as an Ethereum miner is from inflation. And your yield as a hex staker is from inflation. But here's the difference. Here's the magic. If you're an average length, average size staker in hex, you're getting no dilution because you're the one getting the new coins. It's a profit center to you, not a loss. Mm -hmm. But in Bitcoin, there's a negative externality that you have to pay for. You have to pay, dump the price to get the money to pay for electricity and hardware to pollute the environment. It's bad for everybody. It's bad for the environment. It's bad for the Bitcoin price. And so if you can get the same security or better by piggybacking on an existing network, like the Ethereum network, which is what Hex is currently on, then you get outsized returns. It's, it's a more efficient system. So instead of people dumping the price every 10 minutes to pay for electricity, we don't have any of that in Hex. It's, it's just more efficient. So all, all Bitcoin is, is an Excel spreadsheet on the internet that requires your password to spend and inflates at 1.2% a year to keep it honest. Mm -hmm. That's the best description of a blockchain you'll ever find. Okay. And very similar to that, Hex is the same thing. We just pay miners, we pay stakers to hold the price up instead of miners to dump the price. Okay. All right. So one of the concerns, and again, I'm not, I'm not saying you are or aren't, but one of the concerns is that mm -hmm. Hex is a Ponzi scheme because, and this is this is what uh, some people have theorized, is that um, Hex generates coins and then just mints coin, quote unquote, out of thin air. And those mm -hmm. coins are used, those newer coins are used to pay the interest rate on the existing coins that have already been minted. So that's where the Ponzi scheme aspect comes in. Can you address that? Sure. So there are tons of scams all over cryptocurrency. Yes. I've been in Bitcoin since it has been called a scam ever since it was started. Peter Schiff 
Nassim Taleb, Nouriel Roubini, they all will tell you that Bitcoin is a giant, huge scam. Yet, Bitcoin has been purchased by the world's richest man, Elon Musk, by one of the most successful companies in the world, Tesla, SpaceX, Michael Saylor, an Israeli pension fund. I could, it's, a, it's a legal tender in El Salvador. Right. And so people that think that they're smart, they think they're smarter than everybody else. Sometimes they get left behind. And in this case, Warren Buffett got left behind. He doesn't have any crypto exposure. Charlie Munger got left behind. Those other three guys that are very smart and very specific things got left behind because they were unwilling to learn from the market. The market says that Swiss bank account in your head, nearly 100% uptime, open 24 hours a day, no counterparty risk, are very valuable features in a world where the dollar only goes down in value and the Bitcoin price only goes up in value an average of two times per year and has never been down for more than three and a half years. No one that has ever bought Bitcoin and held for three and a half years has lost money. Nobody. But these people that have hubris, they won't learn from the chart. They won't learn from the paradigm shift. If they would subscribe to me and follow me, they would be a lot smarter. So lending your coins to a, if you get yield from, like you said, some of these people, you give them your coins, you hope they pay you back some interest. That's how people lose their money. That is the opposite of why cryptocurrency was invented. You're taking your money and giving it to someone else and begging and hoping that they give it back to you and they get hacked all the time. Right. All the time. There was a a company that lent out uh, coins similar to Celsius and BlockFi. Mm -hmm. They went bankrupt. They just lost enough money that they couldn't pay everyone back. So everyone got nuked. And this Mt. Gox nuked, BTCE nuked, Rodrigo CX nuked, uh, KuCoin's been hacked, Binance has been hacked. Every time you give your coins to someone else and do the opposite of why crypto was invented, you get to be in a headline of losing all your money. Now, what I dev- designed is how crypto is supposed to work. You mint your own rewards. You hold your own keys. No one can stop it. No one can turn it off. You can't turn the contract off. You can't turn the trading off. Only you can mint your rewards. It's beautiful. It's perfect. It's the opposite of a Ponzi scheme. A Ponzi scheme fails because it owes you something it can't pay. The original Ponzi scheme by Charles Ponzi was based on saying that he could get cheap stamps in other countries and arbitrage them and mail things in expensive countries. And to a very small degree, that was true. But once you ramped it up, it didn't work anymore. And so it collapsed. It failed. It was based on a lie. We see Ponzi schemes in cryptocurrency and at large all the time that are based on lies. Theranos hey, we can test your blood really well. Oops, actually, we were lying. Enron, hey, we've got all this innovation and energy. We're the smartest guys in the room. Oops, actually, we're lying. And you get this at all levels where people lie. And then in our system, there's no lies. It's just like Bitcoin. It inflates to reward people to hold the price up, just like Mm -hmm. they do at the bank. That We copied the parameters from the bank. If you go to your time deposit, they pay 20% more interest the longer you lock. We just copied that. I understand the principle, Richard. I'm just uh, let's go sure. back to the mechanism concern here. The concern here, once sure. again, is that the new coins are used to uh, pay off the interest in the older coins. Is that is that? Uh, can you address that? Is that it, correct, or is that a misunderstanding of how the mechanism works? It's it's like saying you owe yourself money. So sure. so basically, you're drawing pictures of ponies, and then okay. you draw a picture of a pony, and you're like, this is mine now. And then if the world sees value in that, then great. You just created value out of thin air. And in this system, you mint yourself extra coins. And if the world okay. sees value in those coins, which by the way, in cryptocurrency, the world sees value in things that are nonsensical. Oh, you have a, a currency based on the picture of a dog outperforms Bitcoin by 40X. Oh, you big copies of that currency with different pictures of dogs. They're all wildly successful. Oh, you made a, a, it took a picture of a JPEG and attached a serial number to it. It might not even be hosted on the internet anymore, but now that serial number is worth millions of dollars. I mean, you see misinvestment and mall investment out the yin yang in cryptocurrency and finance in general because there's just too much money out there. It has to go somewhere to chase yield, to not die to inflation. So this, this concept of something being a Ponzi, this, I'll tell you about scams. There's three ways to scam, okay? Ponzi scheme, you lie about something and you say there's some business activity and you say people are participating the profit in it but there's really no business activity and you're just paying the last guys with the new money that comes in from the new guys. 
and your balance just keeps running negative because you have negative externalities. In this system, you will always be able to mint yourself the hex that you owe yourself. It can't possibly collapse in that way. So what other way could you say it might collapse? Oh, it could be a bubble. People thought that Amazon was worth nothing, and then they thought it was worth a lot in the year 2000, and then they thought it was close to worth nothing again. It dropped 95% in value. Mm -hmm. Now, was Amazon a scam because it dropped 95% in value? No, it's now 50% of all commerce in the United States. But people, the human beings, through value discovery, thought it was worth little, thought it was worth more, thought it was worth little again. That's a human problem. That's not an industry problem. That's not a, a business model problem. What's the third way you can have a scam? Multi-level marketing. Why is multi-level marketing a scam? Because it introduces the maximum middlemen between the product or service and the consumer. And so we have rules like the Amway rule that states that 70% of the revenue has to be generated from direct product sales and not reseller packages. In Hacks, there's no referral program, none. There's no levels. So it's not a pyramid. It's not a Ponzi. And as far as bubble goes, it's crashed in price 75% about five or six times. Keeps making new all-time highs. Does that sound like any kind of Ponzi you've ever heard of, where it just keeps making new all-time highs? You know what it sounds like? It sounds like Bitcoin and Ethereum to me. Bitcoin dropped 85% every four years. Ethereum dropped 95%. And since Hex has had a market, it hasn't dropped either of those. Let's take a look at the chart. It has done quite magnificently over the last year. But I mean, it hasn't reached new all-time highs. It's hit a high earlier in the year and it's come down like the rest of the crypto market. Um, oh, we were we were new all-time high like three weeks ago, man. So this this is from... Our, so our all-time high was literally 18 days ago. Literally. Okay. Let, so let, I don't... Maybe, I, that chart's usually accurate. Just mouse over it and see what date it shows at the very top. July 17th. Yeah, 20... Hey, okay, so you, right. you, you did reach all-time high. 18 days ago. Yeah. 18 Everything days else ago. is dying and we're going in new all-time highs. Bitcoin is less than... For weeks, Bitcoin was at less than half of its all-time high. Okay. Well, the theorem right. went to f go ahead. <clears throat> so yeah. Anyway, this this chart you, I've done the math, and over the last year, it's climbed twenty seven hundred percent. So twenty seven times, twenty x times return over mm -hmm. just the last twelve month period. If you count today's uh, today's uh, price uh, over over the last twelve months, so today is August second. We're speaking on August second. Now I'm getting this on Coin Market. There's a lot of different sources you can look at market yeah. cap. According to Coin Market, based on today's market price, you're at nineteen point eight billion dollars in market cap. Theoretically, that should put you right under Doge. So I'm looking yep. at their ranking here on their website here. If we just pull yep. up this site, I see a bunch of things listed. For some reason, yep. um, Hex should be right there, right under Doge yep. number eight. It should be number That's nine right. in front of, uh, ahead of Polkadot. But for some mm -hmm. reason, CoinMarket has decided not to list Hex, even yep. though on the same website it's given information on the stock on, on the on the share on the well the coin price and the market price and it's got a, it's got a price chart too so why is that where's the discrepancy well, here when you when you inquire to them they tell you they want to see uh that you're listed on different exchanges so basically okay. coin market cap got bought by an exchange an exchange that charges you millions of dollars to list so if they start listing things for free maybe they don't make as many million dollar kicks. So there's a little bit of corruption and a little bit of collusion in cryptocurrency and an exchange buying a ranking site. Well, that's a conflict of interest. And I can tell you that when you go to page three, I can show you a lot of other projects that don't belong on page three. We have had a hundred percent uptime since launch. Binance has not. So Binance and coin market cap, the coup companies that you're looking at there, yeah. they don't have the uptime we have. They don't have the price performance we have. We are a superior product to them. They should learn and repair themselves and provide a better service. Mm -hmm. So the, the thing is, first, market cap is a made up number. You can't make money on it. You can't put bids or asks on the market cap chart. Nobody can generate revenue from it. Market makers don't make money on it. Exchanges don't make money on it. And traders don't make money on it. Nobody makes money on market cap. The only thing people make money on is price. Unless you're an exchange or market maker, then you make money on volume. And where does that volume money come from? Victimizing the users who are trying to make it on price. So in cryptocurrency, everything that you see as an advertisement is there to victimize you. A very popular trading site called eToro.com, who has ads over every single sports game you could possibly dream, at the very top of their website says, 67% of our customers lose money with us. And that is misleading. 
because it's far worse than that. The few people that win, win a little bit. And the losses of those 67% are absolutely massive in comparison. And it's through the victimization of those poor people that they can afford to stick their brand and logo all over taxis and all over soccer games and all over race cars and you name it. Cryptocurrency in general is built to victimize users. Google themselves will not let you advertise. What, what do you mean they're built to outright. victimize users? Can you, can you elaborate on that? Who do you, where do you think all this money comes from? Where do you think the profit comes from in a closed system? When an exchange makes billions of dollars, as these margin trading exchanges do, where do you think that money is coming from? It's coming from the destruction of its users. They're burning these people out. They're liquidating them and they're losing all their life savings. And they're not just losing their money. They're losing their health. They're losing their time. They're losing their relationships. They, what, here's, what, here's what most of cryptocurrency is. There's a middleman, which cryptocurrency was invented to get rid of. Okay. Margin trading exchange. Here they are, the middleman. Here's one guy staring at a screen. Here's another guy staring at a screen. They're trying to steal each other's money. He thinks the price is going to go up. He thinks the price is going to go down. And how does the exchange win? Because they don't care whether the price goes up or down. As long as both of these guys are getting liquidated over and over again, eventually they'll both have nothing left. And what you end up with is a world of very rich exchanges and very broke users because they did the opposite of what crypto was invented for and gave their money to a middleman. Instead of buying and holding, you're going to outperform Bitcoin 6.5 million X returns. You're going to outperform Hex's 380,000% returns in a year and a half. These guys get wrecked being greedy. They should have delayed gratification. And I built the thing that delays gratification. But that's How many any more Bitcoin exchange, millionaires right? there'd be? That's any, ex that's any exchange. I mean, stock exchange operates if, the same principle. Mm, to some degree, to some degree. But they don't give you 100 to 1 leverage. And they don't give you 125 to 1 leverage. And they don't have corrupt market cap sites selling ads to scams. Everybody that has an ad budget to show you an ad for the most part is victimizing the users. That's, I mean, man, when I see these ads and I click them, there's no way that the people that click those ads are going to do well. There's no okay. way. Uh, let's move on to the other concern. The other concern that some users have is that you own too much of Hex yourself. Uh, what roughly, what percentage of the uh, float or the coins outstanding of Hex do you personally own? Can you comment on that? I never talk about what I own, but let's talk about centralized ownership. There's been experiments in the world where people have executed fairness and finance and chopped off the heads of the tall poppies and given everybody equal money. It's called socialism. They tried it. It failed terribly. We tried another system where some people get ultra insane rich and other people don't get very rich at all. It's called capitalism. And capitalism has annihilated socialism and communism everywhere they've butted heads. In a capitalistic society like the United States, 1% of people own 50% of the stuff. And those numbers just get stronger. Yet, we have increasing GDP. We have increasing everything good, except education costs and healthcare costs. Everything else is, is getting better as far as like how much stuff you can buy. Computers better, cars better, starts in the morning. I remember back before fuel injection, didn't start in the morning. Mm -hmm. So this idea that you can make the world a better place by making everyone have equal money doesn't work. And not only does it doesn't work, if you try it, the, the poor people that have can't delay gratification just end up giving all their money to the rich people again that can delay gratification, the people that do invest. All of personal development is about choosing a thing that's better long-term than short-term. Imagine how many more Bitcoin millionaires there'd be if they didn't try trading it, if they didn't try market timing, if they didn't try all the silly things that they try and they just bought it and held it. People that forgot that they had a hard drive full of Bitcoin are the ones that made the most money because they, were, they kept their greedy, weak paper hands off of their gains. Because I guess it's hard to sit through a 6 million X return, right? <laughs> right, okay. So are you... All right, so you can't comment on how many uh, coins you own. Fair enough. Oh, can sorry. You, can you? Yeah. So, so centralized ownership is massively successful for absolutely everything. The best time to buy Bitcoin was when Satoshi owned 100% of the coins. The best time to buy Amazon stock was when Bezos owned 100% of it. The best right. time to buy Facebook stock was when Zuckerberg owned 100% of it. Centralized ownership is extremely effective in all industries. Ask anybody in any industry what percentage right. they own of a thing. I mean, Elon Musk owns 20% of Tesla. How's that working out? Are, are, are Should you he be chopped? That, 
are you saying that Hex is a centralized ownership system? It's all public. It? It, it's all public. You can see what keys hold what, but it's pseudo anonymous. You don't know who the person is that holds the keys. Right. Okay. But so, it, so are you are you planning to liquidate any of your holdings anytime soon in the foreseeable future? I I can tell you that if you look at the way the system is designed now, the yeah. biggest holders are being diluted because they're not earning interest, but everyone else is. So that's kind of what happened to Bitcoin too. Satoshi used to own all the coins and then other people kept mining, but he didn't. And then over time he was diluted. And that seems to be the case for nearly every successful industry is that over time founders end up getting diluted. Okay. Well, well anyway, the, the, going back, the, the core concern is that the core, the, the main holder, whoever that may be, uh, if, if there are certain whales, what if they the sell it all at once system, and they drive yeah, it to zero, they, what have they, no what one will be able to sell. It? Yeah. Let's play that game. I love that game. What if everybody sells all the gold at once? Goes to zero. What if everybody sells all the houses at once? Goes to zero. What if everybody tries to withdraw their money at the bank at once? Can't get your money. It's called a bank run. Literally. Everybody's leveraged. You can't get all your money. Okay. What is there anything in this world that's not paper gains? Is this well, is that, there anything in, that, in the world where yes, you could actually in, in everybody that, could cash out at once? No. In that case, there's, there's a not. lot of users of gold or houses. Here the concern is maybe just a few users of hex that are that no. are that are moving the market. No? No. Listen. There is no time lock for you selling your house. Okay. There is no time lock for you selling your stocks. When you lock your hex, there's a time lock. That is the least risky proposition. It is the only thing of all these things we've talked about how does that, that you work? actually can't sell. What is a time lock? What is it? How does that work? So when you lock your money up to the bank, yeah. they penalize you if you try and withdraw it early. Yes. We do the same thing. We copied the successful parameters from the bank. The average amount of when, when Hex started, the average lock time was about 4.8 years. The average lock time now, after a year and a half, is 5.8 years. I am unaware of any other economic system in the world where people will lock their money with no ability to get out for this many years. To get an average of 5.8, you have got to have a lot of 10-year stakes and a lot of 15-year stakes to make up for all the one-year stakes. So we've got people locking up millions and millions and millions of dollars for a decade at a time. And the world has never seen anything like that before. And so it's funny to me that I hear people talking about, oh, it's all going to go to zero. Everyone's going to sell at once. When the actual factual truth is the opposite, that people believe more in this than anything else they've ever invested in in their entire life. Because they prove it with how long they delay, they delay their gratification. Mm -hmm. So there's, you have a chart of future market supply in hex, and you don't have that in houses. And you don't have that in stocks. You know what the future market supply looks like. It's a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, there is literal technological and market dynamic breakthroughs in this that don't exist anywhere in the world ever before. Now, as far as locking goes, you can get out at half of your term. If you serve half your term, you can get out with your principal, but you will lose all your interest. If you try and get out before you serve half your term, you're going to get hit in your principal. Where do those rewards go? They benefit the other stakers that were honest and did what they said they were going to do. And so if you do what you say you're going to do, you do very well. If you lie, you get penalized, as you should. It's called the yeah. truth engine. Do you know roughly how many users are currently in the uh, Hex ecosystem? Sure. So if you look at just raw addresses, I think there's somewhere around 300,000 addresses. But that might be misleading. Because sometimes people will do what's called airdrops and just send coins to people so that they can try them out. And so you don't know how many of those are real users. So in my opinion, the best metric for hardcore actual users are people that have opened stakes. These are people that have delayed gratification, paid a fee to the Ethereum network to, to perform the transaction. And I think we have 41,000 uh, stakers, I believe, in between 35,000 and 41,000. And that... That number uh, rose. I, I would presume that number rose significantly over the last couple of months when the price rose. Yep. Or, or were they yep. mainly? Uh, were, were they mainly? They I guess uh, early adopters, uh, and they, they the forty-one thousand bought in early last year. What do you? Where? What does it stand? Is it did they buy in last been, year? Or in I mean, you could look up all these charts at Hex dot Vision. Um, they're all there. Sure, uh, it's the best. Like you can see everything. Average stake time. You know how long where people stakes are ending so you could end your stake where there's less sell pressure so you can notch your stake where there's other ones not ending there um you know we've got a lot of extra mechanics in the system that, that don't exist in bitcoin bitcoin has mm -hmm. price hash rate and transactions and that's okay. it okay and we have pri we have a lot more stuff
But okay, so but I mean the, the growth rate it has been phenomenal. But why why would I as a as an investor, let's say I want to get in, why would I buy into something that has uh, a time lock? Can you can you explain the rationale here? Sure. Because let's say, let's say the yep. price goes down and I really need to sell yep. for some reason, for yep. some personal reason. I'm penalized for doing I so, I like right? your questions. I love your questions. That is an excellent question. First, if you never staked at all, you yeah. made 385,000% in a year and a half from January 5th to two to 18 days ago. Okay. No staking, no locking, none. If you chose to lock, then you made even more. So you don't have to stake. No worries. No problems. So you're not obligated way, to stake. No, absolutely not. And you can stake for a day. You can stake for one day. You can stake for two days. You can stake okay. anywhere you want from one day to 5,555 days. It's totally up to you. Or you don't have to stake at all. Right. So the magic, there's so many amazing things in this. Here's one of them. Virtual lending. Staking reduces supply, which, assuming static or increasing demand, increases price. Who can harvest the increased price? Only the people that are unstaked. And what is the premium that they pay for that privilege being diluted? Because they're not receiving inflation, but the stakers are. And so the unstaked people that reap the rewards of increased price due to supply reduction pay in the form of dilution interest to those who are staked. Okay. So, so it's, basically it's, it's a virtual premium. lending. You're, you're basically buying into a premium for higher return. So what is a higher return on exactly. staking than from the interest rate? What, what, is, what Roughly, what, what, what interest rate are we talking about here? The average interest rate in HEX is 37%. Now, in order to get an average interest, you need to be an average size, average length staker. And the primary component there is time. So the average stake is 5.8 years. Now, if you stake less than 5.8 years, you're not going to get 37%. You might get 17%. You might get 15%. And so it rewards you. It's a meritocracy. It rewards you based on how much you deserve to be rewarded. It's, okay. it's awesome. So it's, a, it's so like, it's a, yeah, it's like a time premium. All right. So, but I yeah. could speculate. I could just speculate on the price and yes. say, look, I don't, I don't want to participate in the staking. I just want to, I just want to buy 90% of coins are not staked. Only 10% right. of coins are staked. That's why the yield is so high. If more coins stake, then their yield in hex terms will be lower. But consequentially, it's likely the price will be higher. Okay. Because there was, the supply has been reduced more. It's right. an auto-balancing system. We've already talked about the mechanisms of staking earlier in this no. interview. Let's talk about, uh, so let's, let's, let's move back to what you were talking about uh, in terms of the criteria for identifying a scam coin. You, you listed a few earlier. Sure. Can you tell us roughly there are thousands mm -hmm. of coins out there? In your opinion then, Richard, having worked in this space, how many of these coins out there are scams, in your opinion, that fit your criteria? And can you list a few? Sure, sure. There was a project called Proof of Weekends in 2017 that was based on the opposite of efficiency. Efficiency is very affordable transaction costs. Inefficiency is very expensive transaction costs. This cryptocurrency prided itself on having a 10% fee to send your coins. So when you would want to get into their Ponzi, you would pay a 10% fee that would benefit the other Ponzi holders. And when you would want to escape the Ponzi, you would pay a 10% fee that would benefit the other Ponzi holders. And so it was a very inefficient system. And it created a class of quote games, which are really just gambling called hourglass games. It got a lot of users in 2017. And then it went to zero and stayed at zero and has one user per day now, occasionally. Now, 2021 comes along. Someone copy pastes that idea and calls it safe moon because apparently no one remembers that this has already been done before and worked terribly for everyone involved. So they do it again, make tons of money. Price goes like this and then dies and stays dead. So if you don't like pay attention to history, you're going to make the same mistakes. So now here's a problem. Another problem in cryptocurrency, complete and total scams for a period of time outperform honest projects. It's crazy. People love scams and, and they like playing this game where some people do well and other people do terribly and then they just, they just die. So anything that's based on a game, human beings are designed to get bored of games. It's a good human trait that we have. So anything that's based on a game mechanic, like, uh, like an actual video game, is pretty much doomed to die for the most part because human beings get bored of games. So any of these Ponzi scheme hourglass games are basically doomed to go to zero. Uh, anything that's 
very few actual video games are able to withstand the test of time. Mm-hmm. Like StarCraft lasted a long time. Then it became StarCraft 2, lasted a while, and now it's dead. You know, um, there's very few games that can last this, this test of time. So what you want, in my opinion, is product market fit, a walled garden, adoption, uptime, proof of liquidity, right? So if you want to sell your hex right now, you can go to oneinch.io, put hex in the top thing, put USDC in the bottom thing. If you sell a million dollars, you're going to get in between four and a half and 5% slippage with yeah. no counterparty risk, no middlemen, no sign up, no ML KYC, no begging people with selfies, please send me my money. It's amazing. It's beautiful. And that liquidity has only gone up. The slippage has only gone down. Like it's, it's fabulous. And why well, is it able to do this? Because Bitcoin mm-hmm. did a 6.5 million X. We only did a 4,000 X. People are locking up their money for 5.8 years. What do you think happens to something people only buy and don't sell? Like, it's very obvious what happens. All right. Well, well let's, just, let's just get to the bottom of this and we'll move on. So look, the SEC has been, you know, Gary Gensler is now hem of the, helm of the SEC. So there is a little bit more knowledge, I would say, uh, amongst financial regulators now than before. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so they have been able to crack down on some of these scams that you were, uh, you were referring to. Now, I let's wish. Just, let's just, well, they maybe, the, maybe they're clearing it up for the, maybe they're, maybe they're making progress. Who knows? Who, who knows they're if they're not. not, they are, they are or not. Well, let's comment on that. So let's just clear sure. it up for the doubters there. Have you or anybody else working for Hex been contacted by the SEC with the CFTC Never. for any breaches of uh, financial fraud? Never. Never. My email address is, <laughs> look, my email address is right here. My Twitter's right right here. I do live streams for eight hours. There's never been any scent or whiff of any form of communication by any channel whatsoever towards me or anyone I know, ever. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Because Hex is the opposite of a scam. Here's what scams do. They, They promise you the sky and the moon and the stars. They get your money. And then they just leave with it. And then that's it. That's the end of the story. You can call it an exit scam. You can call it a rug pull. Hex launch totally complete and sufficiently decentralized at launch. No more changes. The code is locked. It is done. It is complete. Bitcoin gets screwed up every once in a while because they try and fix it because it needs fixed. So they tried to make the networking faster. Introduced an inflation bug. Anyone could mint as many free Bitcoin as they wanted two years ago. Lucky they caught it. 